Welcome to Valley's Gold, a show where we explore the people and places who feed and clothe this. On this episode, we venture to the Southern California coast to get the scoop on the state's official fruit, the avocado. Please join me, Ryan Jacobson, on this adventure. Valley's Gold is produced through a partnership between the Fresno County Farm Bureau and Valley PBS. Production funding for Valley's Gold is provided by the Myers Water Bank and Wildlife Project, an educational outreach program working to teach students about water and wildlife issues in California. Field trips are free for all schools and each trip's curriculum is based on learning about California water resources Valley Agriculture, and Native Wildlife. Everyone enjoys getting together to laugh, to talk, and mostly to eat. It sounds so simple, but the reality is that it takes a lot of hard work to feed us. The next time you sit down to eat, remember to thank our farmers, Gar Tutelian Incorporated since 1949 at 800-696-6108. Heroes come in all shapes and sizes. At Brandt, our heroes are the men and women in the field, the folks who work hard to put food on our table. Join us in celebrating the Valley's real heroes. Brandt, professional agriculture. Today, our adventure begins in an avocado orchard nestled against the Los Padres National Forest and just outside the quaint town of Fillmore. To explain how this unique fruit is grown and harvested, we are joined by third generation avocado farmer, Ed McFadden. I am excited to be out in the avocado grove, but before I jump to the growing of these, where is Fillmore? The city of Fillmore is about an hour north of Los Angeles uh, in Ventura County. Okay. And we're right next to Los Padres National Forest. And it's a very mountainous region, which is a little bit different than most agriculture I get to visit. Yeah, so avocados like it's hillsides, well-drained ground, and this is perfect climate for avocados. Did you grow up here? How'd you get involved in the ag industry? I grew up in a citrus and avocado grove in Orange County. Oh, okay. So I've, I've been involved in some form of agriculture my whole life. Got it. And avocados, how did how did you start growing those? They're a little bit of a distinctive crop here in California. Actually, my grandfather was growing avocados in Orange County, and my, my dad too. And, and I'm managing this grove here in Ventura County. Well, that's awesome. Avocados, what is the history of avocados in California? The Hass avocado, which is the primary variety that we grow, the primary variety worldwide, is a native to California. Really? And they were, the first seedling was discovered in the 20s and uh, was patented by a guy named Rudolf Hass. And now most of the trees that you see here, most of the avocados produced in the United States and California and the world are Hass avocados that are native to California. It's absolutely amazing. So these really are, this whole industry is pretty much related. (laughs) Absolutely, California native. (laughs) And when you talk about that particular variety of avocados, what makes it so special? Why is that the industry leader? It has a rich buttery taste. It uh, holds nicely on the trees. It ships well. Uh, It has a, a, a beautiful, beautiful dark color, a knobby skin, but it's a rich, creamy interior that we really makes it special. And you talked about the hilly terrain that we're in and the soils and the climate. What, what, what really makes this region special for avocados? They like more of a coastal environment, not too hot, not too cold. So this is just a very good place for them. And so when you start the development of an orchard, you talk about seedlings. So you're growing these from seedlings. What is, you know, an avocado, is it a fast grower, slow grower? What does it take to get your first crop? It takes about five years to get a crop. And actually we get them from the nursery. They're in a plastic tube about that big. The tree's about two or three feet tall. We plant them in the ground. We we mix them in with good soil and uh, watch them very carefully. And in about three three to five years, five years we start getting some good production on them. So, and, and these trees that we actually are in the middle of right now, these trees are on the older side. What are the age of these trees in the orchard that we're in right now? 
This grove right here, this block was planted in the early 70s. And still producing today? Absolutely. And it's you're- a very good producing. And that's what you were telling me, a very good producing considering the age. That's not typical for a lot of trees that I'm used to. Well, avocados will just keep growing for as long as you can keep them healthy. They tend to have a little bit bigger fruit, maybe a little better quality when they're younger, but they will produce good crops for a long, long time, many decades. When it comes to the growth cycle of an avocado, what's unique is at some point, two years worth of fruit may be hanging at one time. Well, if you look around the trees here, you can see this time of year they bloom. So in the springtime, we get a, usually a strong bloom, say March and April. And those flowers set fruit, but that fruit typically isn't picked till the next year, till the spring, summer, or fall, depending on where we are in the next year. So our season is really late spring through summer. And so you do have, it's, it's unlike probably any, any other tree crop you've seen, where we, we have two crops. We have little tiny avocados and we have great big avocados that we're picking. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah, so the avocados you talked about, it's a very long harvest season because just the way that you harvest is different than a lot of different crops. Absolutely, what we typically do is we'll go through the grove three or four times. We'll take the big fruit off each time we go through. That allows the tree to put more energy into the remaining fruit to give it better size. And when it comes to the cultural side of it, one thing that's important is irrigation. How do you irrigate these trees and what does that consist of? Well, most avocado groves are irrigated with what are called micro sprinklers. So there are sprinklers scattered around the grove that put out a very measured amount of water. If you look around, you see the hoses on the orchard floor. You can see our little spinners. We try to make our water use as efficient as possible. After the avocados are harvested, they will go through several steps on their way to the consumer. Well, we put them in uh, bins that hold about a thousand pounds, and then they're shipped off to packing houses, and those packing houses sort them, grade them, pack them, brush them, wash them, and put them in boxes for market. Got it, and these avocados will essentially end up all over the world, right? I mean, I know this is a very desired fruit. Well, our biggest market is uh, Western United States, but yes, they can go all over the place. In 2017, uh, there was a lot of headlines uh, throughout the state about the fires taking place throughout California. Was this region affected by those fires? Yes, it was. Fortunately, most of the California avocado industry was not affected by the fires, but there were some groves that were, were damaged pretty heavily in that fire. And then, Ed, when it comes to the consumer, what should they be looking for in the store besides that California-grown label? Well, the label is the most important part, but just about anything you see in a store uh, is going to be good. Um, nice round fruit, good color, even color, but the California label. I love California avocados and this has been a great adventure to come out in your grove to check it out. It's been great to have you. Thanks, Ed. We have traveled down the road to Oxnard to visit a state-of-the-art processing facility. We have met up with Steve Barnard, President and CEO of Mission Produce. I am super happy to learn about this facility. Tell me about Mission Produce. Well, Mission Produce started in 1983 as a uh, strictly a California avocado packer. We saw an opportunity uh, with the grower base and uh, went out and uh, get, put a prospectus together and raised some money and got the growers involved in it, uh, vertical integration, and uh, have developed into a uh, global operation now that's in nine countries and seven states. Nine countries and seven states, that's quite a footprint. So it's now it's big enough, I have to pay attention. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, we're here to talk about California avocados. You guys get some incredible, incredible name recognition. I mean, Mission avocados are just synonymous with great quality. What goes on at this plant? Tell me about the uh, sorting, cleaning, and the process that those avocados will go through here. Well, this is the most state-of-the-art avocado plant far beyond anything. I think the key thing here is temperature management and cleanliness, food safety, traceability. Uh, it starts when we pick it up in the field. It's all scanned in. We know where the product's coming from, the grower, the time, the date, the lot, the 
everything. And it comes on in and it's kept track of all the way through the system from start to finish. Yeah, absolutely. And as you continue through that process, explain that packing line to me and that sorting line. What's going on? Well, after it's washed, it goes to a, a singulator uh, where we singulate each avocado and we then uh, grade it optically. It's no people. It's all, it's all. When you say optically, so, so you're actually reading inside the fruit? No, it's taking 20 pictures of each individual avocado. Wow. And it adds up the pixels to determine if it's a number one, number two, or number three grade. That's amazing. It then goes across the scale and then it has a sticker applied to it based on what size and grade our customer is going to. So each lane can do 12 avocados a second. We have 12, uh, 10 lanes, so it's 120 avocados a second that can be graded, sized, sticker. Yeah, that's phenomenal. That's a lot of avocados yeah, every second. It moves. Yeah, and then as it goes through that, it continues, it gets its sticker, it goes into what process after that? Well, then the computer will tell it which line to drop it in. If it's a private label for one of the larger retailers that, that uh, may have a special spec up or down, it could be a number two, it could be uh, export, it could be just a regular domestic product. It's all separated and aligned with the different drops and then uh, it's all custom packed. Got it. And then Steve, when it comes to the consumer taking that product home, what is the best care they can do for that avocado? Don't bruise it, ripen it, and enjoy it. And we talk about the customers. Are you really shipping worldwide California avocados? Yes. So well, the not worldwide because California is not allowed in everywhere, such as China. Got it. Yeah, it will be but it's going to Korea, Japan. Uh, we've sent stuff to Chile, to Europe, Canada. Well, Steve, thank you so much for allowing us to visit your facility to see how the California avocado is processed. Well, we're glad you're here. We're quite proud of what we're doing and uh, it's, a, it's a great success story. The avocado has grown not only nationally, but globally. We have traveled further down the coast to Santa Monica to meet up with Kylie Maison of Cooking with Cocktail Rings to learn about the adventures of a popular food blogger. Welcome, Kylie. Thanks, Ryan. I'm so happy to be here. Well, I'm excited to learn what the heck a food blogger is. <laughs> it's, it's a really fun industry to be in. A lot of people still don't know exactly what I do. Um, social media and blogging is still relatively new within the past, past five, ten years. So what do you do? <laughs> So I personally, I research recipes, write my own recipes, then I take photos of them, edit them and post them. And then for other people to enjoy and hopefully make it home. That's incredible. So you're really helping folks like me learn what to do with those awesome products we get from California products we get from the store. Yeah, with just the click of a button. Just the click of a button. <laughs> What's your background? Um, I'm actually from New Jersey. And then after school, I moved out to California and moved back to New Jersey for one year, and then after one winter was done and back to the sunshine. You couldn't leave this place. I couldn't. And you talk about being a food blogger. I mean, you got the freshest ingredients within a very small circle of where you reside here. I do, and I live right in Santa Monica, and the best part is it's just, I have the farmer's market just down the street, and well, I go there Wednesdays and Saturdays. That's awesome. Well, tell me about cooking with cocktail rings. First off, where did that name come from, <laughs> and then what exactly is that blog? My blog is called Cooking with Cocktail Rings, and I started it a couple years ago. The name actually comes from the fact that I inherited a bunch of vintage cocktail rings from my great grandmother. And cocktail rings are those big, chunky jewelry, gemstones that people wear to cocktail parties. Got it. And so from there, you have now an online presence that is web based as well as social media based. Yeah. So I post all of my recipes that I create on my website, cookingwithcocktailrings.com. And then from there, I post, you know, little short clips and photos for people to see on Instagram and social media. Got it, and when we talk about blogging, I think a lot of people are thinking you and a computer and just typing <laughs> and stuff, but you're kind of doing a little bit of everything. You're, like you said, photography is a big piece of this. It is, I do a lot of different parts. I personally, I write my own recipes, and with that, it's, there's the ideation of it as well. Figuring out how to execute it, and messing around in the kitchen, playing with all the different recipes, and then actually making them, making them look pretty, and uh, doing all the photography and editing. When we talk about food, I guess there's a reason I sought you out because 
You love California avocados. They're they're creamy and delicious. I like um, to use them to add texture to a bunch of different meals. Okay. I'm not necessarily a health blogger by any means. I will eat just about anything. <laughs> but you know, it's it's nice to use fresh ingredients to make things that taste good. That's awesome. And so when we talk California avocados, what are some of your favorite recipes out there? I mean, of course, guacamole. You can't go wrong. <laughs> you can't go wrong, yep. And, and it's simplistic. You can do so many crazy, awesome things with it, too. It's true. I also love using them in poke bowls, which is actually a Hawaiian recipe. It just means that it's cubed fish, raw fish. And so I use it with that to create some texture. With the rice and the fish, it's delicious. Got it. And as a person that really doesn't know about every trendy thing out there, I do know about avocado toast. What the heck is avocado toast? <laughs> Sounds pretty simplistic, but I think there's probably a little bit more to it there's than I'm thinking. There's a lot of different twists that you can put on it. I do a version that's grilled sourdough bread with cream cheese, then sliced California avocados and some everything bagel seasoning. So you've got the poppy seeds and the sesame seeds and garlic all in there. So it gives it a lot of flavor. And for those that want to learn more about California avocados, they have their own website and social media presence as well that you're helping out with. Yeah, I've been involved with California avocados for the past couple months to create some recipes really featuring those avocados. And if you want to learn more about the seasonality and how they're how they're grown, you can check it out at CaliforniaAvocados.com. Well, that's fantastic, Kylie. Thank you so much for sharing this incredible wisdom about the California avocado. I mean, obviously, we got to see it out in the field. We got to see it being packed. But I think most importantly, we love seeing it on dishes. And so you really are helping <laughs> tell that story. It. Absolutely. You're helping tell that story so greatly. Thank you so much for having me, Ryan. Well, I appreciate Great. it. Thank you so much. We are ending our travels at the Horse Thief Barbecue Restaurant in downtown Los Angeles to enjoy a unique twist on the use of California avocados. Our guest is Chef Anthony Chin. I am excited to uh, learn all about this wonderful restaurant. Tell me about the Horse Thief Barbecue Restaurant. Horse Thief Barbecue, we're located in downtown at the Grand Central Market. And what we do here is Central Texas style barbecue. We smoke everything with a dry rub and we use pole stove that's imported from Texas. All I can tell you is you can smell this thing blocks away. It's incredible. I love it. I love it. I love it. And being inside here, it's even better. So <laughs> yeah, everybody, you can smell it blocks away. Absolutely. Now, Horse Thief, where did that come from? It's quite a unique name. It's a character from a Western novel called Comanche Moon. And the character in the novel is Kicking Wood. So that's where we got the name from. Got it. And so there's a, there's a little bit of a story to yeah, it there. Yeah. And uh, one thing, how did you get involved in the restaurant business? Is this something that's just been a passion of yours from a lifelong? It's always been a passion, but I had a day job. I was in the music business for seven years. Okay. Which led me to South by Southwest, which kicked off the barbecue hobby. Uh, during that, I went to culinary school at night, and that hobby turned into what is this now. Got it, and it's more than just a hobby. Man, this thing looks fantastic. You started this in 2013? Yes, sir, uh, 4th of July. 4th of July, so 2013. 4th of July will be five years. Horse Thief Barbecue has many local events, such as sporting parties, local craft beer, and movie nights. Now, the reason I'm here is, of course, I love the smells and the delights of, that we have of the Texas barbecue, but you guys also put a little bit of a California spin on it. Absolutely. We're in the midst of California, so tell me about that. Yeah, like, like today, we're using the California avocado. Uh, we smoke the avocado, make a relish out of it, and put it in a brisket sandwich. When you say smoke it, that's something I've never heard of, the use of an avocado. How, how do you smoke it? Yeah, we split it, uh, season it with a little bit of salt and pepper, put it in our smoker for about 40, 45 minutes, and pull it out and it, it, it transforms it. Where does an idea like that come from? Uh, craziness. <laughs> <laughs> to prepare the avocados for the smoker, we cut them in half, remove the pits, and season the halves with salt and pepper. The avocados were placed in the smoker for 45 minutes at 200 degrees. We now have the smoked ones ready to go out, so yeah. if you want to pull those out and show me what those look like. All right, take a look at these. So that's your smoked avocado right there. Yes, it is. So we smoke uh, additional ingredients with it. We smoke uh, green onion, onion and jalapeno. We wow. chop that all up and scoop these out. We give it a rough, rough chop. Okay. And mix it in a bowl with lime juice and a salsa. And you have some finished product for me to yeah. see here. That's it's right here. So this will go on the top of our brisket sandwich. That's fantastic. And that's what we're gonna make next.
With the relish completed, it is now time to build the sandwich. We begin by prepping the bun with a puree made with smoked avocado, green onion, lime, and cilantro. Our next step is to remove the brisket from the smoker. The brisket is made up of two different muscles, the point cut and the flat cut. For flavor, we are utilizing the point cut for our sandwich. And now we add the smoked avocado relish. That's a healthy portion of avocado, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> we then sprinkle on Cartesia cheese. And so this is where Texas meets California. Absolutely. <laughs> so we're just gonna hit it with a little bit of our house paint barbecue sauce. Uh, it's on the savory side. Absolutely. And there you go, there's your California avocado. That is sandwich. spectacular. That, that was worth the, uh, you know, 250 miles to come down here to see this. <laughs> Horse Thief's avocado special brisket sandwich is phenomenal and uniquely highlights this California fruit. You can learn more about this flavorful barbecue restaurant and catering service by visiting their website at horsethiefbarbecue.com. This is something that I haven't seen before, the mixture of these ingredients, and I'm glad you're down here experimenting well, with thank them. Thank you for having us. I hope you've enjoyed our time together exploring California's celebrity fruit, the avocado. Please join me next time for more Valley's Gold. Valley's Gold is produced through a partnership between the Fresno County Farm Bureau and Valley PBS. Production funding for Valley's Gold is provided by the Myers Water Bank and Wildlife Project, an educational outreach program working to teach students about water and wildlife issues in California. Field trips are free for all schools and each trip's curriculum is based on learning about California water resources Valley Agriculture, and Native Wildlife. Everyone enjoys getting together to laugh, to talk, and mostly to eat. 
It sounds so simple, but the reality is that it takes a lot of hard work to feed us. The next time you sit down to eat, remember to thank our farmers, Gar Tutelian Incorporated since 1949 at 800-696-6108. Heroes come in all shapes and sizes. At Brandt, our heroes are the men and women in the field, the folks who work hard to put food on our table. Join us in celebrating the Valley's real heroes. Brandt, professional agriculture. Valley PBS is committed to teaching children the importance of agriculture. Valley's Gold Education Through Agriculture offers lessons for elementary school students. To download free worksheets and activity kits and to watch child-friendly videos about the crops explored on Valley's Gold, visit valleysgold.org and click on Education.